If you enjoy the topics and videos you see here on Power of Thought, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel. It would really help to support us. In this video, we will be taking on a heavy topic, the topic of discrimination. Whether it is racial, religious, or class-based, we believe that with the help of a few major works in philosophy, we can begin to shed light on a topic which still causes so much pain in our world. A topic so misunderstood by so many. It seems there's a communication barrier, as if our universal human translator is broken. That is, the translation of our feelings and emotions into words and actions needs some serious repairs. To begin these repairs, we must first look deep into our past, ourselves, and our shared human condition. What is discrimination? Let's skip the complicated definitions and just say it outright. Discrimination occurs when one believes they are inherently superior to another. This could be a group of people, a single person, or an entire continent. But regardless, it is based in a socially developed concept. That is, a concept developed to facilitate a particular social and societal dynamic at the time of its conception. The caste system in India was created to keep lighter-skinned races in power. Racism in America developed out of the church as a means of justifying the massive African slave trade while also preaching man's equality in the eyes of God. And anti-Semitism in Europe developed as a means of removing Jews from positions of wealth and influence so that they could be seized by others. But let's break this down. Firstly, what does inherently better even mean? It means that one believes they are biologically, culturally, or for really any reason, that they are better than someone else in a way that is beyond our character. In other words, they believe that based on some inherent quality, one that they believe they possess regardless of how they act, how they treat others, or any other measure of a good person. They think that they are better in their core nature, as if metaphysically imbued with moral correctness. As we said before, the reasons and categories for this are rooted in a historical creation. But history can only take us so far in unraveling this issue. If we hope to expose the root of this very human sickness, then we must go beyond history and society. We must scuba dive into the depths of the human condition. These events only occurred because of a base human factor. People in power may have come up with an abstract justification for socially acceptable discrimination, but why were these strategies effective? Why were people able to be swayed by concepts so obviously false and evil when observed in base reality? Why does a person, any person, believe these lies? 19th century philosopher Max Stirner dedicated much of his work to unraveling these abstract social ideas and how they plague our minds. In his most famous work, The Ego in Its Own, he says, He who is infatuated with man leaves persons out of account, so far as that infatuation extends, and floats in an ideal, sacred interest. Man, you see, is not a person, but an ideal, a spook. These spooks he speaks of are the very ideologies that cause people to have such visceral emotions. They cause hate, invoke violence, and confuse our ability to connect with each other. These man-made spooks are the specters of mankind. They are our greatest sickness, the biggest thing holding us back. And they are completely made up. The spooks that we take up replace our base humanity. They replace the bridge that connects our minds. The bridge on which empathy, understanding, and love must make their journey. We are a society of barren highways, overpasses haunted by ghosts of evil ideologies. With this in mind, we can come to a critical realization. Discrimination and prejudice start first and foremost as a self-judgment. One must first ascribe themselves as good by association with a certain category, before they can then declare others to be bad. You see, the spook in our minds, the phantom sitting atop the judge's podium, passes the verdict on how we are allowed to feel about ourselves. When we adopt a discriminatory ideology, 
Our happiness and view of ourselves is now contingent on that ideology being true. Because if we are not good because we are not this or that, what are we? This fear drives the emotional and violent divide we see play out. A mass of people addicted to a hateful ideal because it is their sole source of identity. It is the microscope with which they look at the world through. Too blind and afraid to step back and see the world for what it really is in all of its incredible diversity. If we pay attention, we can see this happening. The manifestation of the person trying to desperately keep their made-up source of identity alive by trying to destroy its contradictions in the real world. The KKK does not burn the cross in the yard of the black man who keeps out of their way. They burn the cross and conduct their violence against those who present a contradiction to what they see first and foremost as what makes themselves good, being white, symbolic or otherwise. It is a desperate and confused human, enslaved to a hateful ideal, just to have a drop of feeling good about themselves by making up their own measure of what it means to be good. It is right here that we see the root. Now all we need to do is tear the root up ourselves. We have been chopping the weeds for so long, but they keep growing back. Let us defeat this once and for all. If we can avoid adopting these made-up ideas to give us a sense of identity, we may just have a chance. Let us instead focus on the tangible things in the world. Trust your instincts and your own experiences. Be patient with your perceptions of people you don't know well, and look for the nuance in everything. You will come to realize that you don't have to identify with any nationality, race, group, religion, or any static moral ideal to be a good and interesting person. In fact, it is in this place of ambiguity, this space of absolute diversity in human expression, that we will find the best version of ourselves, and thereby the best version of society. This embracement of our fluid nature and identities is a big step to achieving inner happiness. And inner happiness is the ultimate weapon against hateful ideologies.